Hello, Vine Church. Pastor Brandon here. Uh, looking forward to spend some time in the Bible and prayer with you again today. Uh, this is our, our midweek devotional where we just uh, just really enjoy diving into the Bible and praying together. Um, this is just such a vital aspect of our walk and relationship with Jesus. And so I just want to continually encourage you. I know I'm enjoying diving into the Bible and just meditating and, and processing through it. And I hope you are as well. And I hope this just serves as a, as a, a motivation or a, uh, an encouragement to continue to spend time in your own on prayer and, and Bible study as well. So uh, we're continuing our study in prayer just in a few more weeks. Uh, we're not going to be able to cover every passage in the Bible about prayer, but I'm just trying to hit some of the highlights. Um, so we're going to do a couple more passages maybe this week and next, and then we'll jump on to actually the, the Bible itself. What is the Bible and how does that change our life? But the idea of prayer today, we're going to look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2. And we're going to look at the first seven verses here. So I'm going to read that, and then we'll jump in, break it apart, dissect it, and then pray together. So uh, it says, First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. For this I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. So we have here, when we're looking at the book of Timothy, we're looking at the Apostle Paul as our, as our author of this letter, uh, writing to Timothy, kind of his right-hand man, his, his young protege, the, the man that he's kind of taking under his wings and teaching. And he's saying these words to Timothy. So think of like a father of the faith speaking to a son in the faith, and he's sharing these words. He says, first of all, then I urge you, right? This is When he's throwing out the word urging, this is, I implore, I'm asking you earnestly. Like, this is important what Paul is asking of Timothy at this point. And he says to him, I urge you that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people. I love how Paul breaks that up, right? You could just easily have said, Timothy, I want you to pray for people. But he throws out different components of prayer that help us as we kind of think through what is prayer and how is prayer, uh, what, what are the components of prayer that we should really be thinking of when we're praying uh, here's some components. Similar to how Jesus gave us the, the, the Lord's Prayer and different components in there, Paul's giving some different components of prayer that he's asking Timothy to engage in. First one here is supplication. Supplication is the idea of earnest or urgent request to God. It's the idea of sharing your requests with God. Um, imagine, like you, you're in need and you're talking, so the, uh, go back to Jesus' thing where Jesus said, pray to God as Father, right? If you're talking to your father and in your need and you know you have a good father, you're going to ask things that you need. I know my children do that all the time, right? My children are always assuming they have some need and they're coming and petitioning. They don't, not formal like that, but they're coming and asking me, hey, dad, I need this. Can I have this? Um, I'm sure your kids, if you have kids, ask the same kind of thing. Or you done the same thing to your parents. It's that idea of when I need something, I'm going to someone that I think can give me what I need. If I can't do it myself, I'm going to go to someone that I think can help me with that or give me what I want or what I need, what I think I need, and you're sending your petition. So it's the same thing we're doing with God. We understand that God is like a father, and, and we should be sharing our supplications, our, our urgent requests, and our need to God. I mean, God's a good, wise father. He knows which one of those are good or, or not good, right? How many times does our kid ask us for something that they think they have to have and is good for them, but then the wisdom of a parent would say, no, that's not really going to be good for you. All right, God's, God's good and wise like that, far superior than us as parents. But he's saying to, to share your requests. Like, God wants that. God's not asking you to, like, don't bother me, leave me alone. He's saying share your request. Share with me what you think you need, what's going on, what, what you could ha have need of. So ur urge that supplications and prayers. Prayers is more of a generic term, the idea of speaking to God, what we've been talking about all of these different weeks. Then he says intercessions. Think of intercessions as similar to supplications, but it's the idea of a formal petition to a king. Um, it's the idea like uh, Paul's almost kind of telling to Timothy, this is not just like asking your father for something. This is like asking the supreme almighty for something. Right? Like, 
there's different levels of someone you might go to to help you. Like the idea, if you were to petition a king or high-ranking official or governing official or something like that, somebody who actually has power to give you what you want. You know, as a child, you might ask a parent and realize your parent's power and ability to give you something is limited. Like there's people superior to that, to your parent or superior to whatever other person you have. And there's kind of a hierarchy to a kind of the most supreme would be a king or in our case, a president or something with like extreme power. And he's showing, he's saying here to God that God is more supreme than any of those. And so he's saying, send your petition. Send, you have the right to petition the king of all kings. Like that's crazy to think of. Like we, we get to petition or we get to send our request or, or, or share our, our, our wants and our needs and our desires with one who is superior and more profound than any king or president in this world or this king is any this world has ever had. So I urge you that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving, right? So a part of our prayer is also thanksgiving, reminding ourselves of what God has given us and being thankful to God, right? Like if I go back to the analogy of kids with parents, right? The idea of like, what parent wants their kids always to come asking, give me, give me, give me, give me, or I need, I need, I need, instead of the idea of like, thank you. Thank you for what you have given me. Like, I don't know if you get that much from your kids. I don't know that I get that as much as I want, and I probably didn't give that as much to my parents when I was a kid. Um, but that idea of like, like showing our gratitude and our appreciation for who God is, what he's given to us, and what he continues to provide for us. I mean, think of these things in your prayer in your prayers. When you're praying, have a time in your prayer that you're, you're thankful to God, that you're thinking through and processing through what is it that God's been gracious and kind to you over the years and maybe even the day or the week previous. Like in your prayers, be thinking about what God has done and thank him for that. I mean, when you're talking to him, be, be thankful for what he's given and, and make sure to show gratitude and appreciation for all he's done. But then also realize he's a good dad that wants to hear our request you know, we're requesting the Almighty and, and sending our petitions, our requests, our desires, and our needs to the Almighty God and understand that He wants to hear what those are and He cares about what's going on in our lives. Then He goes on from here, right? And He says that to do these four things made for all people, right? That supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people. So it's not just for ourselves. We're not just praying for what we need. We're not just praying for what we're grateful for, but we're praying for other people. Um, and Paul doesn't limit that just to a certain select group. Like he's not saying just pray for your immediate family or just pray for your friends or just pray for your church family. He's saying pray for all people. Right? It's easier that closer we are to a certain group of people to pray for them, um, to pray for like our, our children or our parents or our friends or our family, it's easy to pray for those people because we're intimately connected with them and we want good for their life and we're praying supplications and intercessions. We're praying for good to come to their life and we're praying thankful prayers. Lord, thank you for what you've done for this person and who this person is to my life. It's easy to do that. But then that idea of supplication, thanksgiving, intercession, prayer, regard to people that, that may not be as connected or may not even be people that we like. Because uh, he's saying pray for all people. And he says here, after it, he gives an example of kind of the highest position of who to pray for. Pray for kings or all those who are in high positions. To pray for kings and those in high positions. Um, I mean, we find ourselves right in the middle of a uh, presidential election in our country at, at this time while I'm doing this recording. Um, and I, I would assume, as you're watching some debates, if you're watching those or keeping up with what's going on, you find that you gravitate and like one candidate and don't like another candidate. Um, maybe even don't like either of the candidates and want a, another alternative. The idea here, though, is that you would pray for them. Pray for, the, pray for a candidate you might like, but pray for a candidate you don't like. Pray for officials, kings or officials in high position. Right? Like Paul's telling Timothy to pray for everyone. Pray for all people. Pray for yourself, pray for your family, pray for those close, your friends, but pray for everyone beyond that. Pray for the, the governing officials that oversee your world and the, and the culture in which you live in, right? I mean, here he's telling Timothy to pray for Rome and the, and the Caesar of Rome and the rulers of Rome and the Senate of Rome. Like he's, 
like people that, that aren't necessarily good to Christians at this point in time. Pray for them. Pray, pray supplications, intercessions, and thanksgiving. Thank God for them, whether you like them or don't like them. Pray supplications on their, on their behalf and intercessions. Petition to God that God might do something in their life, specifics that God would work in their lives to bring about what he says here after this. For kings in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good and pleasing in the sight of God our Savior. So when he's saying to, to pray these supplications and thanksgivings and intercessions to kings, to all people, but specifically in the context here, right, kings and high officials, he's saying the purpose behind that is that we would lead a peaceful, quiet, godly, dignified life. This is good and pleasing in the eyes and sight of God. That God wants that, that those, I mean, it's, it's interesting how he correlates those, right? The, the ability for us to have a peaceful, quiet, godly, dignified life goes very much hand in hand with those who are leading us, kings and those in high, high places. The high positions. If those positions, those people, are people of God and run by God, there's the ability for justice to come from that, from peace to come from that, and for us to live this peaceful, quiet. Like, God is not a God that desires or wants confusion or fighting or arguing or, like, God is a God of peace. And so he's saying in here, as pray for those in high positions, assuming that the result of that could be peace. God is a God of peace and desires that. Um, but then he goes like this next step to kind of show you how that peace and justice will play out. And it's this last piece of the idea of sharing the gospel. Verse 4, he says, He desires all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there's one God, one mediator between man and God, and the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. Right? The idea here is he's saying uh, that he... Um, he desires all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And then he just starts sharing the gospel, all right? The gospel. There's one God, one mediator between that God and man, Jesus Christ. And he gave himself as a ransom to forgive us of our sins, to be the mediator between us and God. All right, so Paul's here just sharing the gospel in a nutshell there, uh, saying that God desires for everyone. God's desire is for everyone in this world to come to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. Um, so then I'm thinking, as I'm putting this all together, if I'm supposed to be praying supplications, prayers, intercessions for people, if I'm petitioning to God, to the Almighty, on behalf of people, I think the, probably the most important thing I can petition for, for them on their behalf is genuine salvation in Jesus Christ, a knowledge of the truth, a saving faith in Jesus Christ. Now, I mean, there's a lot of things for us to be praying about, right? There's a lot of things um, that I need, a lot of things that family and friends that I know need. A lot of people in our church are in need for a lot of different things. And those are good and godly things to petition the Almighty for, to, to, to have prayers of supplications and intercession for. Um, but the most important thing that people around me need, and the people in our church need, and the people in our world need, is salvation, saving faith in Jesus Christ. May that be like the, the, the first and primary thing that we pray for other people for. That we pray that they would come to a saving knowledge of the truth of Jesus Christ. That God would continue to well up in us everything that comes with a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and continue to change us at our core with the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Um, you know, in that situation, when when, when, Matt, when large numbers of people come to know faith in Jesus Christ, then you'll see some peace, quiet, godly, dignified life, something that God that's well-pleasing and good in the sight of God. So much to be thankful for in our prayer, but also much to, be, to seek supplication and intercession as well. Thankful that we, if we do know Jesus Christ, have the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We're thankful to God for that because he's the one that provided that for us. Thankful for all kinds of things that God has done in our lives. May part of our prayer be a prayer of thanksgiving and thanking God for all that he's done in our lives and all that he's done in the lives of the people around us and in our church and in our world. We have much to be grateful for. But then we also have much to ask him for, much requests, many needs in, in my life or my family's life or my friends or my church. A um, lot of requests that, that we have needs to God for, but the most important thing we have a need for 
is saving faith in Jesus Christ, the knowledge of the truth. And so let's be praying for that, praying for that for everyone, specifically what we're seeing here for kings and those in high positions. Let's be praying that this season. You know, when we look at what's going on and we have all this uh, drama centered around an election and we have people we like or don't like or don't like any, whatever that situation, wherever you find yourself in that situation, maybe, maybe as you're thinking or wrestling or worried about what's going on, may that lead you to prayer. Prayer both for the thankfulness of what God has done, but then also pray that God would save those in high positions, kings, presidents, presidential candidates, ruling powers, high positions. Pray for them. Pray for a salvation in their soul. And then from there, pray for, pray for every aspect of their life that they would live a godly, dignified life. Um, so let's be praying. Right? This is, and Paul's is urging, imploring and, and urging Timothy to pray for these things. And I would assume Paul, if we were with him today, he would urge us to do the same thing. As we pray, supplication, prayer, intercession, and thanksgiving. Let me go ahead and pray with you today, and then uh, we'll be done. So let's pray. Father, thank you so much. Thank you that you are a good God that cares so deeply about us. Lord, we have much to be thankful and grateful for. Lord, on a personal level, I'm thankful that... At 17, you saved me from the life I was living, and you saved me from my sin and drew me to, to salvation and a knowledge of the truth of Jesus Christ, the ransom for my soul and for my sin. Lord, I'm thankful for the many in our church that you have drawn to faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm thankful for family and friends that I know that love you. Lord, I know many others that don't know you. Lord, I pray for their souls. Lord, I pray for a work of your spirit in their soul that you would draw them to a saving faith and knowledge in Jesus Christ. Lord, I, I pray for our, our presidential candidates or those in our Senate and the House and, and uh, Supreme Court and uh, the executive president branch. Lord, all of the people that are running our country, Lord, I pray for the salvation of their souls. Lord, I pray for them to live out a salvation in you and in a godly and dignified way, uh, seek justice and, and, the, and the good of all people in this country and in this world. And from there, Lord, that we can live a, a godly, dignified, peaceful life. Lord, we know, and I know that you want peace in your world, and you're working towards that. The primary peace that we know that you, you want and seek peace is found in Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to draw close to Jesus. Help us um, to, to, to love and trust him and follow and, follow and serve him. Lord, thank you for all that you have done and continue to do. Continue to change and mold me. Continue to change and mold those in the Vine Church and in uh, the greater Seattle area and in our world, Lord. Uh, do a, a miraculous work in the lives of people around us. Lord, we love you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Vine Church, thank you for spending time with me this afternoon. Um, just really encourage you to dive into the Bible, study. Like I just love doing this with you week in and week out, but there's so much more around this. Dive into some other passage and pray to God and meditate on that scripture. And I know that as we do that, we are growing in our relationship with Jesus Christ. We are maturing and being sanctified in our relationship. It's so essential and necessary for us. So have a good week. I'll see you back here next Thursday at 1 o'clock. Uh, until then, have a great week.